Welcome to a win today. My name is Dan Koch. I'm filling in for Pastor Nat Crawford, and today we're going to talk about deadly desires. Deadly desires. We're going to be looking at James chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. And so let me read the passage, and then we're going to talk about what I mean by deadly desires. Okay, verse 14. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. One of the most difficult things for me to do at this point in my life is to consistently eat healthy. I can eat healthy for maybe two, three, or four days in a row, maybe even a week. But then something unexpected happens in my schedule. Some minor detail gets overlooked, and presto, I'm back to eating unhealthy. I give in to eating deliciously unhealthy food that's conveniently positioned right before my eyes. Isn't that how it always plays out? I mean, if God didn't want me to eat, 5,000 calories all at once, this very moment, then why would he give me this opportunity? Believe it or not, but this kind of thinking is what James is addressing in our passage. In fact, in verse 13, just one verse prior to the ones that I read, James says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. It's from this starting point that James begins to explain the spiritual process of evil temptation that appeals to deadly desires. First, James says, the problem begins with us. We all have evil, deadly desires. That sinful temptation appeals to us. He even says we are lured and enticed by these deadly desires. There's a fishing metaphor in this reference from James. Every experienced fisherman knows exactly which lure to use to have the best chance of success in his fishing environment. James makes it clear that God isn't the one trying to hook you on to sin, but rather it's the power of sin in us and the devil. See, James doesn't mention Satan by name. Perhaps he doesn't want us to use boneheaded cliches like the devil made me do it. Maybe. Either way, the devil isn't mentioned, but it's implied that he plays a role in trying to lure you in, trying to get you hooked on sin by appealing to deadly desires. Of course, Satan and sin never advertises that these deadly desires are deadly. They simply appeal to our desire for pleasure, comfort, or even escape. Again, from James, we get some spiritual insight into this process. In our moment of weakness, or in a moment of unexpected surprise, Satan dangles before our eyes the thought of satisfying ourselves with some kind of sin. Now remember, we all have to battle sinful, deadly desire. And if we aren't diligent in the Word, in prayer, and in Christian community, our will to resist these deadly desires becomes weakened. So James teaches us that when the sinful temptation is presented to us, 
we have a responsibility to quickly resist it, move away from it, turn the channel, close the laptop, or leave the room. If we don't, the more we allow our hearts to entertain the thoughts of pleasure, the higher the likelihood of conceiving and giving birth to sin. Jesus describes the same process in Matthew 5, 28. He says, But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. In other words, noticing a beautiful woman was not the sin, but allowing your sinful heart to entertain sinning with that woman is sinful. Jesus and James are saying the same thing. Sin is birth in the heart before it becomes sinful actions. And these repeated, unrepentant, sinful actions lead to spiritual death. For the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. But death can be avoided. Practice killing deadly desires before deadly desires kill you. Daily prayer. And ask the Lord to deliver you from temptation. Ask Him for the grace to be diligent in the Word and prayer. Ask Him to help you find a church where you can be both encouraged in the faith and be able to encourage others. Make it your practice to pursue these things. Amen.